around after at the end. And I'm back. Yeah. yeah. All right. All right. All right. Um, I, get, I guess the first thing I want to ask you is, it, have, have any of you been to South by Southwest? This is your first time or, or not? First timer. First timer. First time, big fan. <laughs> I heard you two were a little scared. Oh, that what? you thought you were going to be the old man here and that people were going to give you a hard time. Oh, yeah, I, well, I am, I am kind of an old guy here. Yeah, I, I do look like a fed or a pederast. <laughs> Now, I know that the, uh, the movie screened uh, yesterday. How was the reaction? About a minute in, there's kind of a, a, a point where you can tell whether or not the crowd's going to be with us or against us. And uh, they, they were with us from that one minute mark on there. Now, was that the first time that you had enjoyed it with a big crowd like that or, or, or some of the L.A. screenings? No, Toronto. When oh, first, the Toronto. That's yeah, right. That right. Toronto. Like that's right. 1,400 people. And this was maybe 250. Yeah. But it so, was still... So yeah, in Toronto it was a midnight screen with oh, 1,400 right. people, yeah. and and uh, they were like oh, yeah. cheering and stuff. So that was really crazy, and I'm glad uh, I got to see it that way. But South by was really um, interesting. Uh, people were laughing and, and 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 clapping and stuff sometimes, but but um, Tara's character got a, a lot more laughs last night at that screening than 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 at other screenings. So that made me really happy. It wasn't just me. I, <laughs> you were just, you were really good last night. I Thanks. Don't know what it it felt good. felt good. Whatever you ate before last night's screening, <laughs> I would keep eating that before every screening. I think, I don't know why, but maybe, maybe it was the age of the audience. I'm not sure. Well, there is something funny about a 16 year old girl with a machine gun. So, I mean, yeah, but, cool. but it depends on who you are because <laughs> right. certain people, that's their worst nightmare. Um, it's usually people who have 16 year old daughters. Well, that's, let, let's start with, with well, the, the, the subject matter of the film. This is a, a commentary on pop culture, and I guess my question is, or, or society, are, are we really in that much trouble? Are we really, are we there? Um, <laughs> the movie is a, a violent movie about kindness. Um, and I'm sure probably in modern times even, like I don't know what it was like in the 20s and 30s, but there is this underlying viciousness an instant viciousness in our culture now and also this there's this constant um people are constantly having conversations you know they just talk about whatever's this week's charlie sheehan and instead of connecting with people everybody's just talking in sound bites or or you know and and, and i and i am upset by that and and that's what this movie's about um for me, well, I mean, I connected to it on a lot of levels. Um, the, the idea of these sil silly people, uh, for lack of a better word, uh, the reality stars, the 15 minutes. I hate all the desperate housewives or the housewives. I, want, I hate them all. You know, my wife can't get enough of them. I, I can't stand them. Um, I want to shoot. I really do want to shoot the guy that takes the double space. You know, so I connected on that, but I also connected on the level of why can't we be nicer to, to each other? You know, and that was a nice. Yeah, I mean, that's what the movie's about, and, it, and it's not like a cop-out ending. That was what the whole idea for the movie was, you know? And and if I made a movie that pointed out, like if I made a doc on where we're going as people, it, it wouldn't have as much impact as if I make a thing that's a comedy and that's a satire. Um, as I said, you can't hug a Glenn Beck fan into reason, you know? So it's fun to shoot them. I can't stand even listening to Hannity. Yeah, it's just this like this crazy like. I just thought it'd be funny to make a movie that was, um, you know, it's like okay, you guys are gonna be nasty and constantly nasty. Um, you know, the funny thing about liberals and progressives, they they actually kind of play victim and they and they don't retaliate or they or if they do, they do it in a funny way, uh, like uh, you know, like uh, John Stewart or Bill Maher. But this was like I kind of went down into their uh, their arena and 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 threw mud back, <laughs> which I, I again very. It's nice that we can do this on, on film and and kind of get released there. Right, and like people go, well, what would you like it if we made a movie like this? And I'm like, please make a movie like this. I'd much rather have you making movies than, um, <laughs> as Joel said, governing. <laughs> governing. Yeah, yeah. 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 Now, Joel, I know you, you and Bob have known each other a long time. Um, when he presented this, this script to you, did you look at him and go, wow, you've kind of, 
<laughs> really gone off the... the Bob the, is really the, depressed. The, the, yeah, you know, what's going on here, man? Well, no, I, I've seen some of his other scripts, <laughs> yeah. uh, so I, I knew he was off the deep end. He, um, when I read it, I was really excited by it. I, I thought, what a, what a capturing of the, the zeitgeist of the country, whatever, uh, right now. Uh, and I thought that he wanted me to play, you know, some guy in the office or something like that, or, you know, the milkman. I was the milkman in Shakes the Clown. Uh, <laughs> but, <laughs> but he was like, no, I want you to play Frank, you know, the guy. And I, that just blew me away. And I, hell yeah, I'm in. I'm, turns out I'm out of work. Yeah, I'll, I'll do it. Uh, and I, I really had a great time portraying the guy. Uh, what a Terrific. nice guy. That, right, yeah. Well, it's nice that you write for your friends, man. That's cool. Well, I mean, I, I have friends that aren't talented. <laughs> I don't put them in the movies. Uh, actually, that's not true. I have a couple that, that I still got to figure out how to get in there. But, but, um, but I like working with my friends because, because of the trust, you know. Yeah. You know, you, 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 that, that's the big, the big thing for me is the amount of trust and and um, and I get to see my friends, you know, and 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 that, and I I, I can't imagine what it'd be like making movies with strangers. I don't think that would be fun at all. But Tara was. Let's a friend. talk I had about a, I had a, how we, you found a new friend. Yeah. <laughs> how do you? I mean, really, what the casting process is for this character must have been very fascinating. How did you find? You know, Tara, how did he find you? Well, she came in and auditioned. I auditioned, like not everybody else. Half the people in the film are just his friends, but I auditioned, and uh, I guess I don't know. I, I can't. I'm well, sure it's really now. funny her like coming in and <laughs> just all this energy and spunk, saying all this vicious, horrible things, and uh, it was definitely like the movie The Producers. You know, I found my Hitler. You know, uh, uh, she just really stood out. You know, and and uh, and uh, and that, it was just that kind of thing. Tara, I mean the subject matter. Did 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 you have to get you know permission from the from the folks on something like this, no. or you just go? You know, they what? were into it. They were as into it as I was, if not more. So it was it was really great. I had, I had a lot of support from my parents, and uh, we all as a family just kind of agreed with with what Bob had written. So we were I was really excited to be a part of it, especially with the support from my This parents. has gotta be an actor's dream because this is not a part that you're gonna get handed very often. No, no, it's so especially because uh, okay, I play like fourteen to eighteen year old roles and they're all like hot cheerleader, you know, when I'm going out for auditions, or like angry goth girl. They're all like <laughs> they're all like stereotypes and this person right. is just so different that I I had no choice but to work my ass off to get the part. Typecasting in Hollywood? What? what? No it way! It happens, ever. I based her character on, when I was writing it, on um, uh, Liza Minnelli, believe it or not, in a movie called Sterile Cuckoo, when she was very, very young, like she's college age, or, you know, she's probably, like, I don't know, 19. And, and uh, it's just a great character. She's just so nuts and, uh, and sad. And so that's, that's where uh, a Tara's character, Roxy, came from. Did, did it always start out as, as Tara being young? In, I mean, were yeah, you originally be, conceptualizing the story? Well, yeah, because, I mean, the idea of killing the girl from my super sweet 16, you know, I, it had to be like kind of a peer of hers because I didn't want this movie to be just about a guy my age being fed up with society. I wanted it to be a little bit more universal, so I needed someone her age, a peer of, of, of the kid that he first kills. 